I'm over the Route 9 Mass DOT. Do we actually want, maybe want something between now and next meeting? Uh, they were hoping to get something tonight, but we're even earlier. So. Okay, uh, let's talk about Route 9 uh, planting agreement and whether we wish to sign the planting agreement, which means that we are going to maintain the plants they will plant when they do the new intersection upgrades. Has anybody come forward and uh, volunteered to take care of the plants? Not to me. Seeing none. I don't know how we can make that recommendation. I don't want it to become overgrown and and uh, not attractive. Look like chicken feet. So the, the historic commission asked for the plantings. Yes. The historic commission did. Yes. Okay. So. Well, then maybe they would like to find someone to come and take care of them. So seeing where we're going right now, I think we need to wait until next meeting and talk about it. And I will have a discussion with the historic commission. Okay. Yeah, what we had this talked about last time you know. is maybe well, having somebody adopt, you know, yeah, do the no adopt a program. Yeah. Well, has anybody been asked? I mean, they need to know. <laughs> I, it's been published, and, and we tried to do it. I mean, I don't have to see anybody come forward. The only thing that I did hear the other night was that somebody thought that maybe over at the Hooker School that there is a garden club that meets at, the, at Hooker School one night a month. Does anybody know anything about that? No. Nor I. So. The, just two comments on this. I, if I remember correctly, two of the select board members, and I can't remember who, uh, uh, said that they would reach out to folks. And so I did talk with someone. <laughs> okay. And half of it was receptive and half wasn't, so there was no finalization okay. of it. So I, I did get a confirmation on that. All right. So I mean, I can certainly look into it further before our next meeting to see if there's been a change. Yeah. Okay. Can we understand what we're talking about? I mean, for modification, does it mean that once a year we put down some bark mulch around plants that are not going to no. significantly grow, or does that mean that we're going to put as something that's as extensive as the town of Sunderland that is a full-fledged garden? That perpetual so weeding opportunity. I, I hate to bring this up and talk about it this way, but so yes, it means you either maintain it the way Sunderland did, and everyone oohs and ahs over it. Or you maintain it the way Amherst does theirs, and everybody boos and ahs about it. So that's really Boos. what you're doing. They Boos. Boos. They complain. They complain quite a bit. I mean, if, I mean, if you do if you do that type of planting, you really have to have intensive taking care of it. I mean, mm -hmm. you, I mean, there's it's hard you, enough taking care of your own yard. There's people in those sunburn gardens all the time. There is, and they're always messing with and it. They're and beautiful. It, yeah. and that's how you do it. Yeah. And then if you look at the roundabouts, they're not that attractive. Some people think they're attractive, some people don't think they're attractive, but there's hardly any time spent on those. I was looking at Amherst, though, the other day when I came through, and I don't think that they're so bad. The, the urns and things and they have in them, I thought they were... I looked, they the roundabout? Oh, that's downtown. That's downtown. downtown. The bid, yeah, the the bid downtown pays for the... Oh, I haven't gone out that way. You go out to Atkins. Yeah, it's... Oh, that's a mess. You think you're yeah, in like yeah, Arizona yeah, yeah. desert. Oh. Um, you know, what about even reaching out to, um, again, just before the next meeting, but... Smith Oak. Well, I was actually thinking Hopkins. I mean, maybe somebody, I mean, a garden, an after-school garden club would be great, you know? I didn't reach out to, um, how about our UMass contacts with Stockbridge, Stockbridge. the Horticultural? Mm -hmm. I, can, I can talk to Tony. I'll be meeting with him. And how about asking him if there's anybody at... 4-H? Um, 4-H clubs. Yeah, Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts. I mean, they're... I think so it would have to be that sort of civic. Any Eagle Scout or Girl well, that Scout would, that would just to be take a it project, on? though. Yeah, they yeah. would only do it once, oh, you know. Okay. Today is one year of maintaining. Yeah. So we have something else. We also have a line of sight uh, bylaw, um, so that's one of the things that we would have to be careful of that we wouldn't be planting things that would grow or would allow things to grow to a point where. Well, when we the would fast bus goes by, it'll all take it down. B-53. <laughs> we could always push the corners up in the winter, too. Yeah. Joyce, you need some happy pills tonight. Oh, me? Well, really, I mean, well, think about the bus going through and taking out the plants, you know? I think these are one of those things where you put them in, it looks beautiful for six months, and then next year, yeah. um, next year it doesn't. Well, that's what I'm your, getting your at, Jerry. It's not an price. unhappy pill. It's, yeah. a, it's a realistic Yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. You know, thing of who's actually going to take care of it. One more thing to find somebody to do and volunteer for. 
keep it up. Right. While we're speaking about Route 9, just a quick update. We, have, we are applying for an SRF loan for this water line from Wally Street to 400 feet past the town hall. Bayside Engineering is putting the application together for us. I believe, David, it's due either this Friday or next Friday. I've been working with Bayside, gathering information for it. David took the time, worked out some numbers, three different scenarios for the market at 3% for 10 years, and then the market at 3% for, for 20 years, and then the SRF loan at 2% for 20 years. And David, I believe the cost savings would be around 70000 if we went with the SRF loan, if I'm correct. Right, so the uh, the real the the most economical way to do this would be at market called three percent for ten years, right. but the problem is is that the debt payments would overburden your rate, water rates. You wouldn't be able to make those payments. So pricing it out twenty percent uh, twenty years for three percent at market, or tw twenty years at the two percent SRF. The savings to the ratepayers would be over the life of the the loan about uh, seventy or eighty thousand dollars. All right. So Route Nine is on the side for now. Because yeah. even now, without the school being uh, used over there, the actually the foliage around the fence is getting pretty ratty looking. So mm -hmm. I mean, that's the center of town too. So I mean, you got to think about those things. Yeah, we can't true. keep everything. This is one of those things that I think slips through the crack again. Yeah. Now, what yeah. what are we going to do here? Are we going to go back? I, I know Mr. Mooring is going to go back and speak to the Historical Commission and kind of um, portray the fact that nobody really jumped up to the plate or kind of said that they'd be very interested in taking care of this. Are we in the meantime going to try to be contacting some of the people that we spoke of, whether it's Tommy Wischkevitz or, or... David's going to do uh, UMass. UMass. Okay. Stockbridge. Right. Yeah. So we'll at least maybe have that for next week. Okay, so Gil, that, that's what we can still do on our end to see, and they may, maybe they have some opportunities or some thoughts regarding it. I don't want them to think that it wasn't a, a good idea because I think it is a good idea. And I mean, I'd really love for somebody to step up and say, we're going to take it and make that beautiful and it's going to stay like that in perpetuity. But however, it, without in the absence of anybody getting too involved with the projects, I don't think it's a great idea. I think it's a great idea. I don't think it's a good idea for us to put it in there without some type of plan. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So with that said, Let's move to old business number five. The chief would like to talk to us about constable rates. I think that's what he's waiting for now. No, I'm, I'm here until the end. So well, that's true. Well, that's Go ahead. Next um, anyway. Well, as, as the board requested, um, I had one of my officers do a uh, cost analysis for the rate of pay for constables. And I'm uh, going to claim inexperience on this one. I guess this is why you do these things, because it looks like um, you know, there are some that are above and some that are below. I counted, you know, if you if you take out uh, any of the any of the towns and cities that have volunteer positions, and you take out those cities and towns that pay per posting, and you just go by rate of pay, which is how we do things. Um, you're looking at nine that are above and seven that are below, so it's fairly uh, consistent in, in either direction. Does it blow anybody else's mind that Roe pays more for their constables than any other town in Franklin or Hampshire County? <laughs> Absolutely. <Yeah. laughs> but that's per year. So per year, though. I, but there's twice a year the constables work at the polls. Yeah, so, I mean, it's still a lot. Mm -hmm. and, 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 well, he works at town meeting, too, doesn't he? Town well, meeting. yeah, he does, he does the meetings and he does uh, elections and he does postings. But, you know, since we put him on and allowed him to work details, well, both of them actually now, um, I don't even think he charges us to do postings because it doesn't take long for him to take care of that. So uh, really what we're looking at is a couple of town meetings per year and, and elections. Um, elections are anywhere from, you know, they do six or eight hours. Uh, town meetings, how long they last? Four, five, six hours. So, so when he works yeah. details, he's paid a detail rate? Correct. And that's... That was you know, done previous to me taking over, and as a, I guess a thank you uh, for being allowed to do that. He doesn't charge us for most of the work that he does, to be quite honest. Chief, what's your recommendation to us? Well, my hope was that uh, we could bring up the rate of pay. And looking at the, initially I had said 15, which is what our lowest paid officer makes, our special police officers make that. 
Um, but in looking at this, you know, I, I don't know that the board uh, would like to go that high, but it looks like 14 is probably in the middle of um, those towns that are above our rate. Current rate is what? 11. 17. 11.17 per hour. Okay, and you're figuring that this is for 20 hours total for the year? Ballpark? Probably, probably a, that might even be a high estimate. I make a motion uh, for the 15. I think you're talking about $30 a year here, and I think that I, I think that's a small amount of money. Is there a second? That's $300 a year, but there's a second. I'll second it. Okay. I'm and sorry. Can I, can I just ask a question? Didn't you just recommend 14? Well, I, I, in looking at it, you know, like I said, my initial was 15, but I was looking at the departments that are that were higher, and it looks like 14 is really kind of the median of those of those uh, towns. I mean, I don't know why we would. I know we're talking like pennies, yeah. but it's just. He, Let's go back to Joyce. She recommended 14. So. Joyce, you said what? It's the increase is going to be for 20 hours. $300 a at three hundred dollars. At three dollars an hour. Where'd you go to school? Twenty hours times fifteen dollars. No, times three dollars. It's already paying twelve, seven, I eleven, you went seventeen. Times twenty hours. No, a year. It, it, you are, it, the increase is three dollars an hour. It's. I know, but fifteen dollars an hour times thirty, twenty hours a year is three hundred dollars. We're only speaking of the increase here. Oh, but I'm telling you what they'll get the for order. the year. Okay. What the cost oh. is for an annual payment. Okay. 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 So his I, budget will ask for three hundred dollars for per constable. So is there any more discussion about this? Not that stupid. So I'll have my I'll say my piece. Um, I'm gonna support this, but I really think when you submit your budget for the FYA seventeen, you should look and seriously think, do you want to keep with this type of thing or do you want to make the constable more like your specials and roll that into the specials and maybe that constable does do a little more special and, and if he's paid more like a special you can even though he may not want to but maybe the next person who comes in as a constable that's something and they're all kind of treated the same and there's not this constable and specials and and sort of builds some yeah. that's actually so that's a great suggestion it's actually something that uh, sergeant cook was looking into recently um, as it turns out, there's a lot of MGL that governs how much power and control the police chief has over constables. The Board of Selectmen is, is really the, uh, from what I understand now, I can certainly do some more investigation, is really the overseer of the constable more than the police chief. But in our bylaws, it says differently. The police chief over, does oversee the constable. So we, so, as, really kind of a, so we as a select board have taken the power given to us and kind of designated it to you, or, or was a word I can delegated. delegated that to you. So Catch. we would be happy to listen to what you wish to say at, at the, uh, when you do your budget. Okay. So there's a second motion and a second to raise it to $14 an hour. Wait, no, Jerry made a motion to 15. raise it to 15. 15? 15? So you don't Mike said 14, Jerry, Jerry said 15. The motion is 15, there's a second for 15. Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. All right, so we're going to jump to a new business. We have a. Do you want to do asbestos? No. Number two? I'm going to work for at least two games. Oh, so he's here. here till Mike's here until we go into negotiations. He is too, isn't he? Yeah. All right, so let's do old business number two town hall asbestos update. All right, so uh, we had our uh, construction meeting uh, today. Uh, we're a little bit farther behind in the construction than we had hoped, but we have developed a punch list to, uh, to uh, get us to completion by the 9th of August, which means that we're moving back from Public Safety Complex on the 10th of August. Uh, so uh, the 10th will be our moving day. We won't be open for town services with your kind permission. Uh, we'll be moving as many of our functions back into Town Hall, setting up the offices with the furniture that uh, will be brought over from Russell School and elsewhere, uh, getting our systems up and going such as telephone, computer, business machines, and any other uh, uh, component that we need to do. So that is the, that is the uh, status of the project right now. 
We have uh, received this afternoon the first requisition for $77,000, which represents about 88% of the of the work completed. This has been reviewed and approved by the architect. Um, we have asked repeatedly for paperwork to be submitted for the change order for the painting, so we still have that issue out there, and so we'll try to get that wrapped up uh, by your next meeting. Um, but as recently as today, when, during the construction meeting, we were reminding them that the change order paperwork has not been done. And this has been an issue with this contractor from the very beginning, that they haven't been forthcoming with the paperwork that we need in order to fulfill our part of the, the bargain. Uh, so uh, it's uh, nearly complete. Your next meeting will be in town hall. Uh, we'll, uh, and so I make a recommendation that we uh, sign the first requisition. So moved. Second. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Not regarding the payment, but I have a... a what is next Monday and Tuesday going to look like at Town Hall? Next. Or are, are you going to be open for business? Are people be able to utilize the services? Or do you need that time to set the offices up? We need to. We need Monday in order to uh, move everything back in and to set up the systems. So town so services will not be available not be, on Monday. We will not be able to provide a full range of services. Has that been posted in the paper? Uh, no, it has not. We just found out about it today. Uh, so the um, on Tuesday morning, the only system that will still need to be put together is the uh, copy machine, which will be networked with the other uh, departments. So we'll be able to provide a full range of services come Tuesday morning. And they're skilled in reconnecting that machine now? All of our vendors have been contacted today and they know what to do. They have, uh, they have their marching orders. Is there a sadness that summer camp will be over soon? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I not have from to, I have uh, to, chief. Huh? <laughs> I have to I have to say that the fire department and the dispatchers and the police department have been excellent hosts. They've been very, very gracious with their time and their space, and uh, uh, they couldn't have made our uh, stay any more comfortable or productive. Uh, so I really appreciate all the courtesies that they've extended to us. And to your point as the uh, town hall liaison, I have had several requests to leave them where they are now. <laughs> <laughs> Jess you wants to always work with Mike. <laughs> not, not from them. <laughs> not from them. <laughs> no. Thanks. Uh, okay. just, a, just as a note, we had a uh, problem with the electrical fixtures in the hallway, uh, and uh, so we're getting those uh, hall lights uh, replaced. Hopefully we can get them with LED lighting. So uh, we may be running under temporary lights in the hallway by Tuesday, but we'll get them squared away right away. That's got nothing to do with this contract. Mike. Just a quick one. I'd like to ask Mike and uh, Jerry to mind if you could help Monday possibly with like, getting up some help. Orchestrate it. Because the people that I have can only come on Wednesday. So. And, and if they could come on Wednesday, that would be great. Right, which we're planning on. Yeah. Planning, planned it anyway. But Wednesday is the day? Monday. Monday, would be Monday the, is the day. Monday would be the day that we would ask if you could help us out. Okay. I'll speak to you tomorrow. We'll see what we can do. Yes. Thank you. All right. So old business number four, town administrator's evaluation. So we're a little behind on that. We're going to reschedule that to the next meeting. All right. New business number one, we have a payment from Schultz, pay request, pay request number 12. The payment request number 12 is for $9,704.26. It involves work at both stations. I believe the board has a copy of the transmittal from Ty and Bond. What work was completed? for that amount of money completion of the fire alarm installation and control building and pump station one completion of existing pumps generator removal fill of existing dry well that's still at pump station one and pump station four completion of the force main discharge piping and connection on site completion of the force main tie-in within bay road for the change order number four 
completion of dewatering for excavation purposes, installation of a bypass, and completion of the metals for the galvanized platform. So I believe this has been reviewed. I reviewed it, and uh, Charles Tripp from High and Bond has submitted to the town of Penn. So moved. Second. Second. Any other discussion? Uh, at some point in time, uh, we have to understand the completion schedule and it's getting moved again. We understand why it's being moved again, but should we continue to pay and to pay and to pay at this point in time? What percentage are we going to be paid up? The retainage, David, is still in the contract, correct? That's correct. Mm -hmm. So that's about $47,000, if I can remember correctly. That's due left. No, that's that's the retainage. Okay. Uh, How much is due left? Uh, if you have the if you have the requisition, I can read it. I just don't know that number off the top of my head. Balance to finish plus retainage would be two hundred and thirty-seven thousand dollars and change. Are we saying that there's only two hundred thirty-seven thousand dollars worth of work to do, and will be complete? Yes. Michael. Yes, two hundred thirty-seven one eighty-six point seven. Second. Okay. okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Just a little Aye. update for the board on this, if I can find it yep, right here. Of what's left to do there, <clears throat> since we had a meeting, David was there, and uh, Schultz Construction was there. So just, I'll read this off real quick. Schultz has coordinated with the Gorman Rupp people for the replacement of the components within Pump Station 4 that were impacted by the flooding. The estimated delivery of this equipment, that's why they're asking for the extension, is six to weeks, six to eight weeks out. The galvanized graded platform is currently being fabricated. This is for pump station number four, if I didn't mention it earlier. Upon completion of new components within a dry well, six to eight weeks from now, pump station can go through a startup. Number five. What's the date on that letter? The co substantial completion for the change order I believe is in your package. I have it here also. Substantial completion is October 31st. 31st. And for final payments, they are requesting November 30th. I hope so. I do too. So yeah. this, this ex extension of time is uh, required in order for the, the repairs to be happening at uh, at uh, pump station number four, and given that uh, Gorman Rupp is the manufacturer, we have to wait for them to do their work. This is entirely reasonable. It does not cost you anything. I hope not. The 231 is obviously minus of the insurance claim that they will be putting in for the replacement of the pumps. Which they submerged. Yeah. Correct, okay. correct. But I yeah. mean, yeah. the 231 is only what after, regardless of the pumps that they need to fix right. themselves. Yes. Right, that's, that's, okay. that's, 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 that's the remainder of the contract price. price. Appreciate the help. All right, so that's the new item. So anybody want to approve the change or the time extension? So Second. All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 I welcome my political commentary on just in time delivery from the business side. Aye. Okay, so capital plan update. Okay, just a report of work in progress. Uh, the Monday was the deadline for capital uh, projects to be submitted to me. Uh, the departments have uh, been bringing them in fast and furious. There's a lot of information to digest. The schools have indicated that they need additional time until August 17th, so uh, I recommend that we grant them that, that time because their capital requests are going to be very important for us to have a complete picture. Uh, just a little bit of history. On, uh, prior to 2000, the annual town meeting in 2006, we didn't have a capital plan or bylaw for capital plans, so we adopted it that, at that annual town meeting in FY 2010. We started getting the meals tax in. Uh, and it was a good source of funds that we decided to dedicate towards capital projects. It's good to have that. We understood at the time that this is money that was not necessarily going to come in in a predictable manner, and there was some threat by a gubernatorial candidate to rescind the meals tax. 
So at the time we thought, okay, if we should lose this money or if it's not a, a amount to a hill of beans, then we, uh, then we wouldn't, uh, by putting it into a capital fund, we wouldn't be hurting the operational budget. Turned out to be a real winner for the town, but again, it's insufficient. Um, so in FY 2006, we started talking about, 2016, we started talking about uh, dedicating a certain percentage of the budget to capital expenses, not relying exclusively upon the uh, meals tax. And so we looked at some of the other towns, uh, Amherst, uh, Concord, uh, they set a goal of 10% of their operating budget should be uh, reserved for capital. Uh, if we were to do that, that would be about one and a half million dollars annually that we would be doing for uh, capital. So this would, this is obviously a large goal to achieve, but we started talking about ways that we could. In my budget proposal back in January, I included an appendix that included a discussion about capital exclusions and way that we could uh, raise money annually for capital projects that would uh, uh, start addressing our real needs. And just recently, Linda Sanderson went to training and she received some interesting ideas about how to shape our debt uh, service so that this would, could also be uh, performing the needs of meeting the needs of our capital demand. And so she and I have been working on various scenarios about how do we take our pent-up capital needs and trying to come up with a sustainable uh, way of funding all of this without a big impact upon taxes. So we're working together on this. We hope to have something to you uh, as soon as we get the final numbers in from all the departments. Hey, any questions? Is there a balance there currently? A balance in the, in the, in the uh, capital. Uh, it's, I don't have it off the top of my head, but it's not going to uh, be much more than uh, ten, seventeen thousand dollars, okay. something like that. Yeah, at least we've allocated all of this. Mm -hmm. No, looking forward to hearing the other, what other ideas are out there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, new business number four. We got the results for the RFI. We have one property. Say they might be interested in selling to us. We got all that information. Mm -hmm. um, so. I guess from our standpoint, knowing there's one property, the size of it, and what there is, the next thing for us to do is as we, I would say, maybe through the SWOT analysis or through the more discussion with the building committee, is start to decide what we actually truly want to do next. I mean, are we going to do another North Station? Are we going to do something else? That's where we are. The proposal to get rid of the North Hadley Hall, um, we are working through the historic restrictions for that proposal. It's um, a slow process. We should have it, and it should be ready. The proposal should be ready in September to go out. And then we can go out and see what we're getting rid of. I think what that's what people are so frustrated about, um, is that and I know we talked about it, but I guess it doesn't hurt to reiterate it, that they would assume that last spring at town meeting, when town meeting <coughs> voted to have us sell North Adley Hall, it's been kind of a slow process to get it done. It has been very slow to get the and historic restrictions done. And people are kind of not happy about it, you know, that it just wasn't rubber stamped and said, okay, put it up for sale and now we have all these other restrictions that we have to do with them. So I just want to reiterate what people are saying. That's fine. I mean, we got to, there's going to be restrictions on the property if we sell it. So who said, because it's in a historical district, mm -hmm. is that why? I guess that needs to be said. Yeah. I mean, it's in a historic district. It's going it's to have historic restrictions district. as it is. Mm -hmm. So we were supposed to get those restrictions in July. Have we received them? No. Uh, no. We saw the first start of them. I saw them with the building committee and the historic commission a week ago. No, first of the first of the. Oh uh, yeah, a week ago I saw them. Um, the concept of drafting historic restrictions seems to be as onerous as writing legal documents. Because the only well, thing I'll say. Legal. There's legality to it. It would make sense. 
Yeah, but it's uh, it seems I don't know. Maybe it's better. Maybe yeah, maybe come up with something better than that. So is somebody actively working on it? Yes, there is someone actively working on it. They started out by doing like putting together the what they call the form one or form two, which is uh, a document you use for documenting the historical characteristics of a building. And they started with that, and then they're taking that information and then discussing what they want to preserve. And then the two committees met last last week, 